All right, uh, we got an interesting one for you today. Here are my thoughts on uh, Metamorphosis, a.k.a. Winds of Change. So, uh, so yeah, this movie was originally uh, released under the title of Metamorphosis in 1978. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it's a series of... Uh, short so it's kind of like or yeah it's basically uh supposed to be the uh 70s response to fantasia because like yeah i guess everyone wanted to be the next fantasia back in the 70s but um yeah originally it was um or yeah what it was made as was like a series of shorts that are based around uh you know various greek mythology um Yes, it says it's a retelling of stories from Metamorphosis by the Roman poet Ovid. Is that how you pronounce it? Ovid? I don't know. Um, and yeah, they're set to uh, various uh, contemporary pop and rock music by musicians by Joan Baez and Mick Jagger. And uh, apparently Paul Fries was the narrator. I guess he does like the opening... Uh, yeah, the opening narration or something. I, I don't know. But the thing is, um, this version was lost. So, yeah, instead I am reviewing the uh, 1979 um, re-release as uh, Winds of Change. Or, yeah, it says it was, yeah, the reissue, Winds of Change. And, yeah, it's instead it's uh, set to, you know, various... Uh, disco songs by uh, artists like Patty Brooks and uh, yeah instead the narration is done by Peter Ustinov and uh, and yeah apparently the original version um, didn't have any kind of like narration throughout most of the segments I mean I guess Freeze did uh, like the beginning and end maybe but yeah, this version, uh, Ustinov is, uh, narrating all throughout, and, uh, yeah, uh, there's a lot of scenes where it's not needed, like, you know, these segments would benefit a lot more if they were completely silent, and, you know, you, uh, you know, you, uh, piece together what was happening by the imagery, by what was happening on screen um but yeah uh um so the stories are Acteon um Orpheus and Eurydice um House of Envy Perseus and Phaeton um so yeah um I'm not going to bother going through uh, the stories, uh, or, you know, the... Yeah, I'd say just uh, look up the stories. They're all over the Greek mythology stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, we have, like, a character... Um, yeah, it's uh, a boy named Wondermaker who portrays the uh, leading male protagonist types or you know he plays the male lead in all of the stories so yeah he he'll play you know Acteon in one segment and Orpheus in the next and uh yeah Perseus uh, um yeah he even plays uh Hermes in one segment actually he uh Actually, in the Perseus segment, he also plays Hermes. So, yeah, there's a brief moment where the two interact and he's talking to himself, pretty much. But, uh, yeah. And we also got some various uh, female characters who play various characters in each of the segments. Like, yeah, the blonde one is usually the... Well, anyway. Um, so... I guess the animation was pretty nice. It's not the best I've ever seen. Um, you know, there's a... 
There's a nice little animation with uh, Hades, or I guess he's called Pluto in this version, um, and he's uh, and he's animated like very similarly to uh, Chernabog from Fantasia. I guess that's uh, yeah another little tribute to that movie. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. The animation wasn't bad. It wasn't amazing for me, at least. I mean, I guess it had its moments, but, uh, yeah, and the story was kind of all over the place, or, or I mean, okay, I guess the stories themselves were, or, yeah, here's the thing, the, the segments were straightforward enough, um, you know, they're, uh, you know, they're the stories you know, but, uh, yeah, the structure of the overall movie was quite the mess, like, um, I mean, the version I watched had, uh, like, uh, yeah, it had the Perseus story first, and then uh, Acteon, then, uh, what was the next one, uh, House of Envy, and then Orpheus and Eurydice, and then finally Phyton. Um, am I pronouncing that right? Phyton? Whatever. Um... But yeah, there, I saw that there's like another version that like has, first of all, it has like one or two scenes that weren't in the version that I watched. Um, I did watch them real quick, like, uh, yeah, near the very beginning, there's like these, uh, I, I can't explain everything, but uh, um, let's see. But yeah, the segments were in a different order and it didn't make as much sense, the you know, the transitions weren't as smooth, there was, uh, yeah, like, um, at the beginning of the Perseus story, you briefly see Medusa appear on screen, so it kind of gives her away, um, you know, uh, by the last segment, even though it didn't come after Orpheus and Eurydice this time, it starts by talking about how they're coming back from hell, or, you know, uh, you know, well, anyway, yeah, like, it's, you can tell it's not the order it's supposed to be, um, but yeah, even in the original version, or in the version that I watched, um, yeah, this, the structure was a mess, like, you know, they just tell these little stories, and then, yeah, it starts suddenly, and it ends suddenly, like, yeah, the movie literally ends with the main character as, uh, well, uh, what's, yeah, fight, fight on whoever, um, yeah, basically, uh, catching on fire and, yeah, falling into space where he burns to ashes and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a nice way to end a movie with your, uh, cute little protagonist, um, burning to ashes, yeah. <clears throat> So, yeah, and, and pretty much all of the segments are uh, pretty disturbing in ways. Like, you know, uh, the Perseus story, of course, we have, like, Medusa. And, you know, there's also the, yeah, the three fates with the eye. They're creepy. Um, Medusa has a bunch of sisters who are kind of scary. Um, and, uh, but uh, that's... That being the supposed first segment, it's uh, the only one that uh, does not end in some kind of traumatizing way. Because, you know, Acteon, um, yeah, Acteon ends with him turning into a deer and then uh, his own dogs hunt him and kill him. Um, and yeah, it just ends there. There's also a pretty disturbing scene, scene of him killing a boar. Um, there's also a lot of nudity, like, um, I mean, not just in that segment. In that segment, there's, like, an excessive scene of, uh, the goddess Artemis, a.k.a. Diana. Um, yeah, she's bathing, and, yeah, the reason why she turns him into a deer in the first place is because he, yeah, he looked at her nude, basically. So, yeah, it's kind of, kind of dumb. I mean, I'm sure it's, I guess it might be part of the original greek mythology but still um and uh yeah there's also naked 
fairies flying all over the place, but um, yeah, also uh, yeah, also the Medusa scene. She's got uh, or yeah, her and her sisters. Their monster forms have uh, exposed breasts, and you see their nipples. Blah blah blah. Um, I mean, yeah, I know I'm like bringing up in like all these reviews with, where there's nudity, um, but you know, I'm just. I'm just pointing out for those more sensitive viewers, because, like, literally since the half point of the 70s, like, the second half of the 70s, almost every single movie I've watched had some kind of nudity in it. Or maybe not almost all of it, but still most of them. Like, yeah, a, a good chunk of them I can point out uh, some nude scenes. And, uh, yeah, um, I guess the other... The other segments weren't quite as naughty, but yeah. Um, anyway, uh, on going back to like the disturbing stuff, you know, um, House of Envy ends with the, uh, or yeah, it ends, or yeah, what happens is you know the sister who's uh, doing a bunch of stuff out of jealousy for her other sister. Um, yeah, she. Basically, it ends with uh, Hermes turning her to stone, and then she breaks. So, and, uh, you know, uh, Orpheus and Eurydice, if you know the story, you know how, uh, you know, tragic it ends. Um, and then, like I said, Phaeton ends with him uh, turning to fire, and, yeah, turning into a fireball and burning in outer space, and that's the end of the movie. So yeah, and yeah, during that moment they're playing this, uh, yeah, upbeat, uh, yeah, what was it, uh, yeah, they're playing this upbeat Patty Brooks song, and, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, plays throughout the credits, and yeah. So, the movie's kind of disturbing, and it's a mess, and, uh, can't really say I cared for it very much, but at the same time, I also uh, respect the ambition that went into it. Like, this was an interesting movie, at least. It's, um, I didn't hate it, but I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't really say I liked it either. Um, yeah, it, like, a lot of people do trashed the movie. Yeah, a lot of critics trashed the movie back when it was released and yeah, I can see why. It's it's de it's definitely not Fantasia. Fantasia it's not. Um but yeah. It wasn't bad by any means. I've seen way worse. Um So yeah, um I'm not Let me see. I can't think of anything else to say at the moment, but as usual, if there's anything I think of after uh finishing this recording i'll put it in the comments and uh yeah for rating i guess i give it somewhere between a five and a six at the very least it was kind of interesting um and yeah um if anything i've been talking about has you curious you can feel free to check this movie out um yeah it's it's not a bad movie, it's just a little, uh, messy and disturbing, and, uh, yeah. I mean, decide for yourself. I mean, I probably wouldn't personally, personally recommend it, but, again, I've seen way worse than this, and, uh, yeah. I, I guess I'll leave it at that for now. Mash it and smash it, signing off.